Welcome everybody. In this video, we're gonna be talking about bounds checking when it comes to arrays because we have this maze here and we don't wanna go out of the bounds when we're trying to solve it. Now, my chair I'm on is slowly shrinking. So at the beginning of the video, I might be up here and by the end, I might be all the way down here. So apologies for that. But anywho, that's totally off topic. What we're gonna be doing is we're going to be creating a method that we can use to automatically check if an index is valid for the array. So because this array is a static class variable, we don't have to pass it as an argument. So when we create a method, it might look something like this. We can go out here and say public static, and it's gonna be Boolean, so it's gonna say if it's valid or not, so true or false. And we'll just call it is valid. And we don't have to pass in the array, so what we can do is we can just pass in the x and the y. So int x, no, I'm gonna keep y's on the left, int y and int x. All right, so that's that. Let's see if, um, okay, we just is complaining because we have a return, no return here. So in the meantime, we can just say return false. So if you're uh, particular and you don't want any errors showing up, you can just give a, a default return. And then once you're ready to code it out, you can delete this and start typing stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're going to see all the possible ways that it can be invalid. And if any of them are true, we're going to say it's false. So it's gonna look like this, if, and then in here we'll put an expression to check if it's valid, and then we'll just say return false. If none of the conditions in the expression are met, we're just going to return true. We don't need to use an else, you can if you prefer that view, but basically if you get to this point, line 78, it's automatically gonna be true, so save a little bit of typing there. So let's think about all of the ways an index could be invalid. Let's take a look at our maze. So scroll up to the top. So the very first one, let's first look at the Y coordinate, which deals with which row we're talking about. We could go one too high and go outside the top of the maze, or we could go one too low and go outside the bottom of the maze. So there's two issues with Y, same thing for X. We could go too far left outside of the maze, or we could go too far right outside of the maze. So we're basically going to decide what are the walls. So let's go back to our method and see what we can do. So let's write out these expressions. So let's first look at y. If y is less than zero, we go too far up. Or if y goes too high, which you can tell if, it go, if it's equal to the size. So if y is greater than or equal to maze dot size, oops, every time. Length and size, I mix those up every time. So the length is not zero based. That means if you have three elements, the highest index is going to be two. Length will be three, highest index two. That's why we have to say equal to either, because if y is equal to the length, it is invalid because it's actually one index too far. So let's take a look at the maze to see that visually. We start here, index zero, then we go here, this row, index one, and then we go here, index two. The size of maze is actually three because we have one, two, three. But if you're index three, that means you're actually one lower down here, which we don't want to do. So it has to be less than the size. So let's go put that in our code. Y cannot be greater than or equal to the maze.length. I don't know why I keep saying size. Apparently I'm stupid. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, then we'll do the same thing for X. And we can break these down into new lines if it's easier to read for you guys. We use the pipes to say or. So this or this or this, if any of them equal true, then the whole thing is going to evaluate to true and we're going to pass back a false as the final evaluation because these are the things that can't happen. So if they're true, then we want it to be false <laughs> saying it's not valid. So if X is less than zero 
or if x is greater than or equal to maze dot length, uh, not quite right, because that's going to give us the height or how high the y is. For x, we actually need to check the width, the columns. So to do that, we're going to pass in y, which is the particular row we're talking about. So let's say as an example, y is one, we're going to check if x is greater than the length of maze of one. And maze of one is going to be this one right here, which the size is gonna be four. So it can't be four, it can be three. Three's fine, but four is not okay. So I think that works and let's just clean up the syntax a little bit. Return false if any of these are met, otherwise return true, and that should work. Now, um, how do we test that? I guess we can just integrate it in our code. So to do it, all you have to do is put another condition. If is valid, pass in y plus one and x, which is the new coordinates we're going to travel to. If they are valid, we're just going to do the same exact thing for down. So cut that and paste it right here. And we're gonna do the same exact thing for all of these. So if is valid, y and x minus one. And you can see there's a lot of copying. We have the, the same thing almost like four times exactly. Maybe there's a better way to do that so we don't mess up, but for now this should work. So we'll just cut this and paste it. Again for up. Take this and paste it in there. Uh, make sure we put the coordinates in there, y minus one, one and x. And then lastly, one more time, if is valid, cut this. And then we'll pass in y and x plus one. All right, so I think that should work. The only thing is, I think it would make more sense for the comment to go on the outside. So I'm gonna move that up, paste it right there. And I'm gonna do that for all of these. So we'll just do that real quick. There we go. All right. So let's just run, see if we get any exceptions. Let's follow this path. So we start here based on the starting position being y0, x3. So we start here, we go left, we go down, we go left, we go left, and then we go up and we found it. Awesome. So now all we have to do is try a bunch of different mazes and try to catch any bugs. So let's say there's no path. There we go. Run it now. Oh, we got a, uh, an exception. Line 22. Let's take a look. I have no idea. <laughs> so my assumption is that this isn't actually on the first iteration because the first iteration seems like it would work, right? We're just adding this position and then we're getting this value. So I'm guessing the issue is actually coming from the bottom. Maybe we're not taking the path off correctly. Oh, see, we're just uh, outputting no path, but we're not returning. So we need to return to basically finish the program. So that's gonna exit out of the main method. Run now. Nope, it didn't like that. Uh, okay, I think we need less than or equal to zero as well. So if it is zero, then we still shouldn't go to the next iteration because we're gonna get that issue when we do path.pop on the next iteration. So let's run it now. No path, all right. So you guys can see I'm actually truly a total noob at coding. I make stupid mistakes. And if you made that mistake, we're both stupid. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's no stupid mistakes, I guess, but just we'll just try to be careful to not make them, but every developer makes bugs. You will never get to your point where you don't make bugs. All right, so that works. Let's see, maybe there's an option where it has a, a potentially successful path, but it doesn't quite work. 
So if we look at the, the path it takes first, it goes down first. So let's make this a one, and then it goes down one more, but then it's a dead end. So then it backtracks, and maybe it'll go left. But let's make this path fail too. So then we'll make a successful path up here, and we'll get rid of that. We'll run, let's see what happens. It moves down, it moves down. It says it moves left, but I just realized there's another issue with this. When we pop off the position, we don't say that we backtracked a position. So let's go back down to this uh, pop here. And what we'll just say is sys out moved back. Let's try again. Run. Let's look at the maze. So we moved down, we moved down, we moved back, we moved left. Oh, and then actually moved up, and then left, and then left, and we won. So this is actually really super cool. What if we increase the size of the maze? Let's, let's go wider first, and then we'll add some rows. I'm going to copy this and just paste it. Get rid of that extra comma at the end. Don't want that. And we'll just change some of these. And let's say the destination is right here. And let's say we want to start uh, right here. We'll get rid of those old destinations. We'll make those one. And where did I say I wanted to start? Uh, was it here? I don't know, maybe here. So that's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 for y, and then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for x. So y is going to be 4, and x is going to be 8. Let's run this. It says no path, so let's just see what it does. It goes right, it goes up, it goes up, it goes left, it goes back. It goes up, up, it goes back, back. Then it goes right, nope. Then it goes back, then it goes back, then it goes back. <laughs> oh, I'm getting lost. Then it goes back again. And then it realizes there's no path because that's the only path it could take. Maybe we can make a secret path to it this way. We'll make a bunch of ones in a row just so it can find its way. There, so that's a direct path, no distractions. Let's run it now and see what happens. So we won, so it definitely found it. Let's see the path. So it just took that path directly. If you wanted to make it do a huge long path and then fail at that one and try a different one, you would have to realize which directions it goes first. So it's always gonna do down first. If it's given the option between down and left, down will be chosen over left and so forth. So that is your maze solving application. I'm gonna commit this to GitHub. And I'm just gonna say maze solver complete. Now, if you do this and you find some bugs, please tell me in the comments or in GitHub. You can do a pull request. Um, I might see that. <laughs> I guess we'd have to find out. Now I'm thinking about what I want to do next. Do I want to elaborate on this? Maybe try to do it recursively to get some practice with recursion or maybe do some more complex stuff. I'm not entirely sure, but whatever it is, the next video is going to be a lot of fun. So I'll see you then and don't forget to subscribe.